Job chapter 11, verse 1 to 6. Job chapter 11, verse 1 to 6. I want to talk to you this morning on the faithfulness of God. The faithfulness of God. Hebrews chapter 11, the chapter of faith, speaks of Sarah and makes this powerful statement in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 11. It kind of, it's inserted right in the middle of the chapter of faith. It says, by faith, Even Sarah, who was past childbearing age, was enabled to bear children because she considered him faithful who had made the promise. Church, I love that. It says that she considered him, not mankind but God, him faithful who had made the promise. You know the word in Hebrew, faithful, sorry, the word Hebrew, Considered is the word to judge. I just think often many times in life, it is so easy to judge our lives with such a narrow focus about what we're dealing with today. But versus the long-term perspective of God's faithfulness over our whole life. Maybe today you're going through a significant issue. Maybe today there's a challenge in your life right now. I'm praying that this morning's message makes you look past the narrow focus to the overall faithfulness of God, of what God is doing in your life. I mean, think about Job, about what Job had suffered. You know, Job, we know this, is a book that deals with the question, why does bad things happen to good people? It's the age-old question of humanity, but I would say this as well, that the book of Job is also a book of wisdom. And I would say this, in the midst of suffering, there is wisdom to be had. If you were to just to take that suffering portion out of the book of Job, to be honest, it would not make sense. But look what the Bible says at the end of Job's life in Job chapter 42, verse 12. It says, the Lord blessed the latter part of Job's life more than the former part. In other words, Job's life was so much more than what that portion was that was a mess. Can I say this to you today? Your life is so much more than what you're dealing with right now. Your life is so much more than the wrestle that you're dealing with. Your life is so much more than the mess that you're having to navigate right now. There is a bigger portion of your life and a bigger perspective that I believe the Holy Spirit wants to give us this morning. And in that, even in Job's life and even in Sarah's life, this overall perspective and this wisdom lesson was that God's overall sovereign faithfulness and God's sovereign purpose over Job's life and over Abraham's life and over all the other lives in the Old Testament, was fulfilled. That despite what these people went through, God was still on the throne, God still had His way, and God still fulfilled His purpose in all that these men and women of God went through. I want you to notice that at the end of Job's life, I don't have it up here, but in verse 10 of chapter 42, it says, The Lord restored Job. It says the Lord doubled Job's life. In verse 12, it says the Lord blessed the latter part of Job's life. I want you to notice the Bible says that the Lord blessed. The Lord doubled. The Lord increased. It was the Lord that restored. Church, it was not a bunch of random facts and random circumstances of life that came together that Job won the lottery. It was the purpose of God that God had his way in the end in Job's life. In other words, God had the final say. Can I say this? No matter what you're going through today, God will always have the final say. The enemy's not on the throne. Your circumstances not on the throne. God will always have the final say. And there's, there's a passage in the book of Job when I was doing my devotions a few weeks ago that I want to speak about today. And it draws this thought out further. It's the conversation that, one of Job's friends is having with Job. And he's giving his perspective on Job's circumstance. And he's not getting it quite right. 
I find it interesting that people always try to have their perspective about what God is doing in our lives. People have always got an opinion. People always want to kind of put their two bobs in to have a perspective. And really, a lot of part of the book of Job is Job's friends who are meaning well, but they're kind of having an unhealthy or ungodly perspective about what God is doing in Job's life. And there's a statement that one of his friends Zophar makes that jumped out of me that I want to have a look at today that kind of ties in this idea of the faithfulness of God. It says this in Job chapter 11, verse 1 to 6. It says, Then Zophar the Ammonite replied, Are all these words to go unanswered? Is this talker to be vindicated? Will your idle talk reduce others to silence? Would no one rebuke you when you mock? You say to God, my beliefs are flawless and I'm pure in your sight. Oh, how I wish that God would speak and that he would open his lips against you and disclose to you the secrets of wisdom. For true wisdom has two sides. Know this, that God has even forgotten some of your sin. See, his friend, Joe's friend Zophar makes this point. He says, God has even forgotten some of your sin. In other words, he's implying that, that Job's misfortune is a result of his own sin. That part he got wrong. He's trying to make sense about what has happened in Job's life. He got that part wrong. But there's another statement that Zophar makes that's actually worth looking at this morning. He says in verse 5, Oh, I wish that God would speak, that he would open his lips against you and disclose to you the secret of wisdom. For true wisdom has two sides. True wisdom has true sides. I want to talk to you this morning when it comes to the faithfulness of God about the double-sided coin of wisdom. That wisdom has got two sides. It actually means twofold. In other words, it's not like there are two opposing sides to wisdom, but there are two folds to wisdom. There's two ideas surrounding wisdom. And when it comes to us growing in wisdom, I would say this to you today, that one of God's long-term perspectives and one of God's long-term purposes that God has for us, the way that He reveals His faithfulness to you and I is the purpose of personal maturity and personal growth. The purpose of imparting wisdom and insight throughout our whole lives in order to make us better. We often, think that, we often think that the faithfulness of God is about what God can do for us. But maybe this morning, the faithfulness of God is about what God actually does in us. Many times we talk about the faithfulness of God, about having an end result and achieving an end goal. But just maybe the faithfulness of God is about making us better people, increasing our capacity, giving us a better sense of wisdom on how to deal with conflicts and how to deal with problems, that we leave this life with something that we can impart to the next generation. Can I say this to you today? One of the greatest inheritances, parents, that you can give to your children is not often necessarily a physical inheritance, though that's a blessing in itself. But the greatest thing that you can impart to your children is the life lessons of the journey of faith that God has taken you through. I tell you what, I don't want to make the same mistakes my parents had. I want to learn from their mistakes. I want them to impart wisdom into my life. That's why the Bible, when it speaks about God in the Old Testament, it talks about a multi-generational God, that we don't go back to square one. We don't go back to ground zero but there's an impartation of wisdom and depth and maturity and growth that we have never, ever seen before. And listen, we see it right throughout the Word of God. I mean, Jeremiah is complaining. God had anointed him. God had given him his word. The Bible says he, he says his word is like fire in my bones. He had got a call. I would probably say that Jeremiah was almost Pentecostal. He was so full of the fire of God. But he complains about all this stuff that's going on. I mean, he starts off in the call of God and next minute all hell breaks loose. And it doesn't make sense. For Jeremiah, he's trying to work it out. It just doesn't seem right. And he comes to his idea with God and he says, God, this is just unfair. 
because I'm obeying you. I'm being obedient to your call. And look what God says. I like it in Jeremiah 12 verse 5. My Bible's got the title God's Answer. God's Answer. I love that. Who knows that God often answers us according to what He wants us to hear, not what we want to hear. And He says this in verse 5. So Jeremiah, if you're worn out in this foot race with men, what makes you think you can run against horses? If you can't keep your wits during times of calm, what's going to happen when troubles break loose like the Jordan in flood? In other words, God was bringing Jeremiah to a place of personal maturity. God was bringing Jeremiah to a place of personal growth, personal faith, that was giving him the capacity to actually deal with some of the challenges he was about to face because of the call of God that was on his life. And I would say this to you today, that God's faithfulness in being with us is often not necessarily seen in what he does for us, but what God actually does in us. That God's commitment to us is a development of personal faith, not always fixing crises in our lives. And what I like about Job Yes, there was an increase in what God did for him in the latter part of his life. But there was an increase in Job himself. There was a different perspective. There was a new understanding. There was a deeper revelation of God. We read this, this portion of Job's life. We see that God had revealed himself to Job in such a deep way that Job had never seen before. I pray no matter what crisis you go through or the things that you are dealing with this year, that there is a deeper revelation of the Holy Spirit that you have never ever seen before in your whole life. That there is a maturity of faith, that there's a depth of faith and a resilience and a emotional capacity, a confidence in the hard times because there is a well that you have dug with God. You got to ask yourself, what is the two sides of wisdom that Zophar's communicating with Job, the two folds of wisdom. Well, the book of Job has two sides. The first side is the side of being righteous. Job was a righteous man. And I guess it's the side that is, I would call it, it is our side. The side of us doing the right things. The side of understanding the power of sowing and reaping. It's our side. It's our fold. It's what we do well. And I'll say this to you today, that that side of wisdom is so true. What you sow is what you reap. The side of making the right decisions. The side of making sure that you and I follow God carefully. Many times in the Old Testament when God gives the law to his people, he often speaks about following God with careful steps. That we are carefully obedient to this wonderful faith that God has given us. I was reading this this week in Romans in my devotions. In Romans chapter 5 and verse 1 to 2, Paul talks about righteousness that comes from faith in God. He talks about grace. He says, Therefore, since we've been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand, and we boast in the hope of the glory of God. I want you to notice what Paul says. He says, by faith into this grace in which we now stand. You know, many people get grace wrong, right? They think grace is just the license to do whatever we want, right? It's not true. Grace is a standing position, a position that we have in God. Justification is a position that we have in God. Grace is a position. I stand in grace. I stand justified. We are now in the grace zone with the Lord Jesus and that empowers you and I to live righteously. Right, Proverbs chapter 13 verse 14 speaks about making good decisions. It says, The teaching of the wise is a foundation of life, turning a person from the snares of death. Good judgment wins favour. Can I say this? If you want to live in favour in your life, just learn the power of having good judgment. But the way of the unfaithful leads to their destruction. In other words, often in life we just create our own mess. All who are prudent act with knowledge, but fools expose their folly. There is our side to wisdom, our responsibility to live a righteous life. 
our responsibility to make good decisions, our responsibility to make sure that we research the matter and do everything that we can in order to put our footsteps in the right place. There is our side to wisdom. And this is the issue. I think this is the issue out of Job. We often judge the entirety of the event according to our side. I see something, I run with it, I make a determination, I make a judgment call by what I see, by what I've researched, by what I've done, my side. We live in a generation right now that are absolutely convinced that my side is always correct 100% of the time. But I'd say this to you today, that it's the old adage that there are two sides to every story. There's your story. There's your journey. The things that you face today, that's your side, your perspective, your understanding, your viewpoint, your limited lens, your side. The problem with our side is that we are not 100% perfect. No matter how much we're convinced that our side is correct, we live in a generation that says, if I feel it, it must be true. Our side, the problem is we get it wrong. We stumble. We read situations wrong according to our limited viewpoint. We fail in what we think is the right choice at the right time. I need to realize later that we have completely, completely misread the situation. I'll tell you a funny story. Years ago when my kids were young, I was taken to the park. It was kind of my responsibility. I take them to the park on a Saturday morning and I took them to a particular park. They were playing in the playground and I was sipping my coffee and looking around and thinking about Sunday and so forth. And this person comes up to me, this guy comes up to me. And the first thing that he says is he says, listen, I'm, I'm new to Australia. He said, can you help me? Now, he had a very, very thick accent. So I was trying to listen to what he was saying. He said, can I ask you a question? I said, sure. I said, you know, what's the question? I wanted to be a good neighbor. I wanted to help him out. I wanted to be a good Christian. My intention was to help this guy out. And so he asked me a question. And he came up with a word that I did not understand. And so I asked him the same question again. I said, could you just repeat that? He asked the same question. He inserted this word. Do you, can you tell me where I can find this? And it was a word that I hadn't heard before. I'm thinking, oh, I started to think in the back of my mind, it could be this, it could be that. So I asked him again the same question. I said, could you just repeat that? What are you looking for? He said, I'm looking for this. Again, I was finding it hard to understand him because of his accent. And so in the end, I just turned to him and I said, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, sir. I said, I know you've come from a different country, but we actually don't have any of those here in Australia. We have none of those here in Australia. There's not one of those here in Australia. I'm sure they are overseas, but that thing that you want is just not here in Australia. He looked at me strangely. I said, okay, and he walks off. I thought I was a good neighbor. I helped him out. I lowered his expectation about what he thought he could achieve here in Australia versus his country overseas. I jumped in the car, and all of a sudden, it all made sense. And the word that I thought was an unusual word because of his accent, there was like a clarity that had never come before. And I realized he was asking for the toilet. Can you please help me find the toilet? We don't have any of these here in Australia. <laughs> There's none of these. You may get them overseas, but there are none in Australia. You won't find one dunny in the landmass called Australia. My good intention, my desire to help, just got it wrong so badly. You understand what I'm saying today? We misinterpret events. We misinterpret communication. We misinterpret certain areas. No matter how much we say, oh, God knows my heart, I have a pure heart, and yet we still get it wrong. The book of Job speaks 
three times of true wisdom, true wisdom. Not just my side wisdom, but true wisdom. True wisdom looks at the other side. And there is another side to the fold of wisdom. And it's the hidden side. It's God's side. It is God's perspective. And what we see in the book of Job is man's interpretation about what Job is going through. It's Job's righteousness. Good on him. He was a righteous man. There is no doubt he was doing all the right things. But then there was another perspective. There was another side to wisdom. And it was God's side over Job's life. It's the side that you and I don't see. It's the unintended good long-term consequences of a faith life. The side of wisdom that we don't see is that the way that God moves beyond our good intention. The way that God blesses you and I even though we get it wrong. The way that God never gives up on us. The way that God loves us despite our funny ways. The way that God still invests in you and teaches you. And I, when we are headstrong and stubborn, it's the side that we often don't see. It's the side of the big picture. Not the narrow focus about what we're dealing with today. We often don't see the consistency of the faithfulness of God because we don't take a long-term perspective. We are so now generated that we think this has been a bad year. Where is God? Rather than having the long-term perspective about the faithfulness of God over our lives. The times he saved us. The direction he led us into without us even knowing it. The way that he made us arrive at a place of peace. Even when we don't even realize it. You don't see the limits that God has put on your life. The hidden side of wisdom says this. You will have no idea of how many times God saved you this year. We will never know how many times that God interjected into a bad decision that we're about to make. We'll never understand the way that God has guided us and led us to this place where we look back and we go, man, I'm blessed today because of the faithfulness of God. The way that God has allowed us to learn without breaking us. The way that God is teaching us lessons to increase our capacity without completely breaking us where we can never recover. You see, we don't do see the disconnect between our efforts and God's efforts. Because the faith life is not just about works, but it's about trust. One of my favorite passages, and it's repeated a number of times in the Gospels, is about the servant with the talents. The servant comes and multiplies the talents. And notice... I think it's in the book of Luke or I think it's Mark where the the master says, well done, you've done well with your talents, now I'm going to give you a city. In other words, what happens is that when you are faithful, God doesn't reward you according to your faithfulness, God rewards him according to his faithfulness. God multiplies your efforts that are beyond your wildest dreams. It's God's side, the two sides of wisdom, your side and God's side. Your works, but God working through you, in you, and for you in this season. And I would declare to you you today, and I prophesy over this church, that it's not just about your works, but God is going to do something in you, God is going to do something for you, and God is going to work through you. (laughs) Deuteronomy 32 verse 4, He's the rock, His works are perfect, and all of His ways are just. A faithful God who does no wrong. Upright and just is He. I want to leave you with a couple of thoughts, then we're going to pray. I want the musicians to come. You still got to take up the offering and do other things. I kind of just messed up the whole run sheet, but that's okay, isn't it? (laughs) Acts, chapter 3, verse 1 to 7. I was reading this the other day, and it was Peter and John and the beggar at the gate. We've read this many times before. But let me read this to you again, verse 1 of Acts chapter 3. One day Peter and John were going to the temple at the time of prayer, at three in the afternoon. Now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. And Peter looked straight at him, as did John, and then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave me his direction, expecting to get something from them. And then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have. 
And what I do have, I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Take him by the right hand, he helped him up. And instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. What you and I often do is we insert ourselves in the story as Peter and John. It's people that are bringing healing. But for a few moments, I want you to put yourself into the lame man's position. Imagine if you were the lame man, broken, fractured, hurting, having an enormous need, knowing that you need the help. You need some help. And I guess the point is this, is that he was asking for one thing. He was asking for money. The point is it just never even entered his mind to actually ask for healing. Just didn't even consider it. Didn't even consider with his life experience, his perspective, his judgments based on the way that he'd been treated. The only thing that he could arrive at because of his perspective was money. God had a different perspective. And that was God wanted to heal his life. If we close ourselves off to God's perspective, we will never see the blessing of God and the fullness of what God has for us. It has not entered into the heart of man the good things that God has prepared for them. We can only receive them by the Spirit of God. We can only receive them by the Spirit of God. So one of the things that I do is I say, God, in my season, let me ask the right question. I want one thing, but maybe you've got something far better for me. I don't want to limit what I want. But maybe there is something that has not entered into my heart yet. See, that's faith, isn't it? Faith says, I don't even know you. God, I don't want to limit you to what I believe I need in this moment in time. But God, I know that there is another perspective. There's something out there. And it's unseen and I can't see it at the moment. But I'm not going to limit you to my physical need right now. I know that you're going to do something greater in me. I know that you're going to do something more significant in me. I know there is something that you're going to do that is going to blow my mind. I don't want to ask for money when God wants to give me healing. Supernatural encounter with Him. What's the maturity? What's the faithfulness of God where we grow in? But don't limit the Holy Spirit to your life experience. Just maybe start asking the Holy Spirit what He thinks we need for our lives. Which brings me to my second point, and then we're going to pray. This morning, I want you to commit to what you can't see. I want you to commit to what you can't see. That's faith. That's faith. We commit to what we see. We commit to what we know. We commit to what we want. It's 100% of our perspective. Let's take a step back this morning. <laughs> Say, God, I'm going to commit to what I can't see. That's faith. That's the walk of faith. That's the walk of faith. I don't know next year what's going to happen. Part of me will commit to what I can see. But I'm not filling my whole life with what I can see. I'm creating room in my life for what I can't see. Because I believe the Holy Spirit is going to do far more, greater than I could possibly even ask or imagine. I don't want to lock into my perspective. But I want to lock into the perspective of the Holy Spirit. The two sides to wisdom. What side are you on? Is it 100% your side? Or is there room for God to move? Will you commit with me today? Will we commit together to what we can't see? The faith journey, the faith life. We're okay with that. I don't want to ask for money when God's got healing. In my brokenness, in my shame, in my pain, I just lock God in. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. I want so much more than what God has got for me today. Can I pray for you this morning? Why don't you stand to your feet today? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Come on, let's begin to worship. Thank you. And waiting here for you. 
with our hands lifted high in praise. And it's you we adore, singing I'm going to invite you to come forward today. You say, you know what, I want to commit to what I can't see. For me right now, it's going to be a step of faith. God is not asking you for anything. He will never ask you for something that you cannot handle. Many times we're afraid of that because we go, I don't know what I'm committing to. But God is saying to you today, will you trust Him in faith? Will you trust Him that He knows what He's doing with your life? Will you trust Him that He will lead you and guide you because the overall faithfulness of God over your life? Will you trust Him today with your family? Will you trust Him today with your business? Will you trust Him today with the issue that you're dealing with right now? There are some people today, you are dealing with something right now. Right now in this season, right now, you are dealing with something. And if you were to take Job in that slither, you would go, what is going on? But Job was more than his issue. I declare to you today, you are more than your issue. You are more than what you're dealing with right now. And today, if you say, you know what, I'm just going to commit to the unknown. I'm going to commit to what I can't see. I want you to come and stand here in the front as we worship God. I believe this morning you are sowing a seed for 2023. You are sowing a seed of what the Holy Spirit is going to do next year. God will remember this moment. He'll honour this moment. He will declare this moment. Stop looking at what you can see. It's time for you to look at what you can't see. And we're just going to worship Him for a few moments. And this is a holy moment this morning. This is a moment where the Spirit of God just wants to come and realign. Come on. Hallelujah. Give me vision to see things like you do. God, I look to you. You're where my help comes from. You know just what to do And I will love you, Lord, my strength And I will love you, Lord, my shield And I will love you, Lord, my rock Forever Give 
me vision to see things like you do. I want some of the pastors God, just to come and begin to pray. Just gently put your hands on people, begin to pray. Come, James, why don't you come and remind? Hallelujah. To know just what to do, and I will love you, Lord, my strength. And I will love you, Lord, my shield. And I will love you, Lord, my rock, forever. There's a wonderful sense of the Holy Spirit just blowing through this meeting right now. Even if you're not in the front, I want you to just begin to receive from the Spirit of God this morning. Some of you this morning, God is breaking the power of you trying to make things happen. Some of you in this meeting today, you've been trying to make things happen. Even this year has been trying to make things happen. God is saying, surrender that to Him. Stop trying to create things. He's the creator. He can create opportunity more than what you can. I'm not talking about you sit down on the TV and watch Netflix 40 hours a week, but I'm talking about this push, this drive to create this thing. God is saying, why don't you just rest in Him? Allow Him to step in that gap. Joshua and the walls of Jericho, they just started worshiping God and everything fell into place. That's the Word of God for some people this morning. To start worshipping Him and honouring Him and lift up His name. Let God take care of the result. Some of those walls that you've been pushing hard this year, the Holy Spirit will begin to pull them down purely because you position yourself in trusting that the Lord Jesus knows what He's doing. Come on, if that's you, lift your hands to heaven as we worship. Hallelujah.
God heals. And hallelujah, and our God heals. And hallelujah, our God heals. And hallelujah, and our God he heals forever all my days. Hallelujah. Would you sing that again? Hallelujah. And hallelujah, and our God heals. And hallelujah, our God heals. And hallelujah, and our God he heals. Forever all my days, hallelujah. wherever your head is bowed and every eye closed. If you're in this place today, you don't know what it's like to actually have Jesus Christ lead your life. I'm not asking you today whether you're religious. I'm asking you today whether you've actually surrendered your life to Him. Whether you actually know what it's like to actually allow Him to lead you and to guide you. If you've never ever personally experienced the faithfulness of God, The greatest act of faithfulness that God gave to us was 2,000 years ago when He sent His Son to come to earth, to die on a cross, to rise again from the dead, to bridge the gap between man and God so that we can have a relationship with Him. That was the greatest act of faithfulness. You say, does God love me? God dealt with that issue once and for all 2,000 years ago. He sent His only Son. He loves you. He cares for you. He's with you. He wants you to walk with Him. He wants you to walk and step with Him today. I'm not asking you today whether you're religious, whether you go to church. I'm asking whether you've ever surrendered your life to Jesus, where He's the Lord of your life. But today I'm going to lead you in a prayer. It's a prayer for you to say, Jesus, today I hand my life to you. I give it to you. It's good things, it's bad things, it's mess ups, everything. I give it to you today. And if you've never prayed that prayer, maybe you did years ago, but you've walked away from God. You can't say that your life is really in the hands of the Lord, then I'm going to lead you in a prayer. Wherever your head is bowed and every eye closed, before we move on, you say, Matt, today, will you pray for me today? Today, I want to hand my life to Jesus. On the count of three, I want you to lift your hand. One, two, three. If that's you, lift up your hand. Thank you, sir. I see that hand. Someone else here today, quickly, wants to see your hand, you can put it down. Awesome. Lift your hand right up so I can see it. Right up so I can see it today. Thank you. Awesome. Wonderful over in the back there, fantastic, God bless you, fantastic, wonderful, someone else here today, lift up your hand, stretch it right up so I can see it, as a statement of faith today, you want God to lead you, you want the Holy Spirit to lead you today, say God, I'm giving my life to you, over there, fantastic, wonderful, fantastic, someone else here today, lift up your hand, awesome, someone else here this morning, You've never really done that. You've been to church for a long time, but you've actually never really done that. Today's your day. Lift your hand. Let me pray for you today. Awesome. Right in the back there to my left. Person sitting down. God bless you. So good. Just saw that. Someone else here today. Awesome. I'm going to lead you in a prayer today. I want you to pray this prayer after me. It's not a religious prayer, but it's a sign of surrender. It's a prayer of surrender. It's a prayer of lordship today. You're doing business with God this morning. And as a church, we're going to pray together with you. I want you to pray after me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you this morning to come into my life and to be the Lord of my life. Forgive me of my past and everything that that represents. Lord Jesus, today, be my Lord and my Saviour. I believe in you. In your name, amen, amen. Let's give these people a wonderful hand this morning. Pastor Frank, why don't you come up? We're going to come around our offering this morning. How are you? We're matching. We are. Our shoes. There you go. And I didn't even see you get dressed, so I don't know. You left early. I did it on my own. Oh, wow. You can do it. Is you that know all right? how to, Yeah, I don't dress you, so <laughs> you know how to dress yourself. 
these, these men, they're wonderful. Wasn't that a great message this morning? How good was that? Just, uh, you can take your seats for just a few more minutes and we're going to continue on. You know, today, if you've come along to our service and it's your first time here, this is a great house to be in and a great church and we want to make you feel very welcomed. If you head out to our foyer, there's a next step counter out there and you can have a chat with the team out there just about how you can connect in and know more about our church uh, because there's many ways that you can connect in. Uh, But also, we have so much going on in church over the next few weeks. Christmas is in, is it three weeks? Three weeks. But in two weeks' time, we have our carols. As Matt said to you, we are 80% full, and uh, we want you to not miss out. Because I know that for many, this is your time to bring your families who are unsaved and we see this as a great outreach, so please book in. We've also got these, these things here. Here we go. We've got flyers here that we would love you to take a few of these and hand them out in your street. Maybe your neighbours, you can go and hand one of these out to your neighbours or just put them in some of the letter boxes in your area so people can know about um, what we're doing here. But also we have these, if you have a business and you, if you could put one of these in your Uh, window of where you work or in the schools or wherever you um, have influence, maybe you could put one of these in that spot as well so we can get people coming along. Because it's all about outreach and it's all about winning the lost and people coming to know Jesus, isn't it? We want them to know about Jesus. Um, Many other things, as I said, we've got our Faith Academy internship coming up. If you want to know more about that, you can have a chat with Kat. Uh, She'll be here tonight, but also you can call the church for that as well. Now, next week is a big week for We Care, our community service. It's our helping hand day. So if you have one of those red bags, our generous heart bags, if you have one at home and it's empty... Could you please fill it and bring it back this week because next Saturday morning between 9 and 12, we'll be handing them all out to the many people that will be coming through our big shed out the back here. So please don't leave them in your car, in the boot of your car, because I've heard that. I've heard people say, oh, I just left it in the boot of my car and it's been sitting there for a year. Please don't do that. Bring them back, but fill them. If you can't do that, then you can make a donation and we will fill the bags. We're also looking for volunteers. So if you head to our website, um, you can also volunteer between 9 and 12. It's only a few hours and that would be great for us as well. Just help our team because we're believing for, you know, over a thousand people to come through and be impacted by what we do as a church. Uh, Because this is what we do as a church. We feed people. We have a great... Uh, you know, food relief program and many other things that We Care does. But this is my little segue into the offering. How good is that? I've got to do that. So, you know, it is just one of our many ways that we do give. And I want to say a big thank you to you who give every week through your tithes and offerings. And there are many ways that you can give, but you do it through your tithes and your offerings and you help us in our community because we want to reach out to our community every week. We want to be able to help people who are in need. As I said, we've got so many programs that we run and we get to chat with people down the back in the shed on Thursday and Friday when they come to get their food, we get to chat to them about Jesus and it's all about him. It is all about him. What we do is not about me, not about anyone on the team. It's about him. It's about winning the lost. And this is where we get the opportunity to do that. So can I encourage you to give? If you don't usually tithe, please start to. I'm not even going to ask you to pray about it. It is just one of God's requirements. It is what he asks us to do. So if you don't usually tithe, why don't you start to? And, you know, even through this hard time and our, you know, life is changing, put God first. Tithe to Him and I will tell you, He will bless you beyond your imagination. He always does. Even though the road is hard sometimes, He always blesses us continually. And I can say that for many years, that's what's happened in our lives. We go through these ups and downs 
but God always comes through. So I want you to hold your tithe if you've got it in your hand. If not, if you do it electronically, let's just pray together today. Lord Jesus, I just thank you that today, once again, we have the opportunity to give to you. Lord, I just pray and thank you for every person in this house. And I pray for great blessing over every family, every young person, every older person, everyone in this house. We thank you, Lord, in your name. Amen. So the containers are on the end there. Just pass them on through as well. Tonight we also have, we've got a great night tonight and I would, we would love it if you'd come back out again. We have our church-wide prayer meeting tonight and it's one hour of prayer. We're also going to be anointing anyone that wants to be anointed for healing, breakthrough, um, all sorts of areas that maybe you're struggling with. We're going to anoint you with oil. We're going to believe with you tonight. So it's one hour of prayer and we're just believing for God to just move through the service. And uh, Pastor Matt, I think we'll share just maybe a five-minute message. But the rest of it is prayer and some worship. Our church loves prayer and worship, and we want to do that tonight. So come back for that again. But before we go, I might just quickly show this clip, and then we are finished. And you can go out and grab a coffee at the end of the service or whatever drink you'd like out in our cafe and have a chat with a team. Maybe meet someone new today. So let's just watch this. most favourite times of the year is this event and um, our team has been working hard already. They've been out videoing yesterday, they were doing all this filming. It's going to be a great time. Jessie's come up with all sorts of ideas and our great team are just amazing. Don't you think so? We have got the best creative team ever and I might be biased but I actually believe we do have the best creative team in the world. How about that one? Put that out there. I think so. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, thank you, Camille. <laughs> but we do, we have a great team. Um, so please book in if you can today or go out to our info counter, have a chat with them there. Why don't we stand? Come on, let's stand up. Go and enjoy lunch with someone and we'll see you all back tonight. What an incredible service. We just hope that you were encouraged by Pastor Matt's message, challenged by Pastor Matt's message, uh, and that we go out into this week changed because we know as disciples, it is a daily process that we offer ourselves uh, daily as living sacrifices to Him. And I just want to encourage you to do that from wherever you're joining with us. Uh, whatever your world looks like this week, we just pray that you would take out the peace and the love of Jesus where you walk. And uh, I'd love to be able to pray with you right now. We know many are at home and uh, uh, unwell or uh, other things going on. And look, we just want to say that we are standing with you. And, and I just want to pray for you right now before we go. Well, Father, I thank you, Lord God, that even though that we are separated by distance, we are together in spirit. And it's in that unity we pray, Lord God, for each of our uh, uh, church family who are unwell today. I just speak your healing in Jesus' name. Father, regardless of what it is, Lord, I just pray that you would come and touch their bodies right now in Jesus' name. Fathers, we come into this season of Christmas, all those who are doing it tough or, or Father, looking at a, at a lonely season. Father, I just pray that you would bring people into their worlds right now to, to uh, connect them to community, to fill them with hope uh, in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, I encourage you again, if you are in proximity to our Down On campus, make sure you jump online. Get those tickets. Uh, all proceeds are going to our We Care programs. Uh, but get your ticket to come along to Christmas Spectacular. The link is in the chat right now. And also, uh, dropping in the chat right now is the... Uh,
link to our Facebook, our Faith Online Facebook group. I encourage you to jump on that. Uh, we have many of our great members jumping on. Uh, and look, that's just a place for you to drop in your prayer requests or maybe share something uh, that God's been speaking to you about. I know Kristen's on uh, sharing worship songs that are speaking to her. Different people are sharing encouragement. So I encourage you to jump onto that, uh, at that group right there. It's a practical way that you can connect into community and we'd love to have you. But be blessed, church. Have a fantastic day and a beautiful week. And we can't wait to see you again for Faith Online. If you're your first time visiting with us, please come and meet with us. We would love to welcome you. Have a great day. Our favourite time of year, Christmas, is upon us. Not only is this a great time to gather with family, friends and loved ones, it also gives us an opportunity to shift our focus onto those who are doing it tough this festive season. Our generous heart bags are the seeds of our community outreach and this Christmas would love your support to help bless a thousand households in Dandenong through our Helping Hand Day in December. You can collect your generous heart bag from the foyer along with a sample of the shopping list and return them back to any of our campuses during a service or pop down to see us a week here on a Thursday and Friday between 10 and 2. If you're unable to do the shopping yourself, you're welcome to make a donation of $30 per bag and you can check out our WeCare website for details. Hey Church, my name is Clinton, if we haven't met, and I'm the University Ministry Pastor here at Faith. On behalf of our senior pastors, Pastor Matt and Franca, and our whole team, we would love to welcome you and hope that you have a great service today. We have a wonderful Next Steps team, so if this is your first time visiting with us, please come and meet with us. We would love to welcome you. Have a great day. Christmas is upon us. 
Not only is this a great time to gather with family, friends and loved ones, it also gives us an opportunity to shift our focus onto those who are doing it tough this festive season. Our generous heart bags are the seeds of our community outreach and this Christmas would love your support to help bless a thousand households in Dandenong through our Helping Hand Day in December. You can collect your generous heart bag from the foyer along with a sample of the shopping list and return them back to any of our campuses during a service or pop down to see us a week here on a Thursday and Friday between 10 and 2. If you're unable to do the shopping yourself, you're welcome to make a donation of $30 per bag and you can check out our WeCare website for details. Thank you.